Hello and welcome to my channel IELTS Listening. Let's start with one of the best practice tests for improving listening skills. Section 1 First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 7. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 7. Good evening. I've been asked to speak to you about the proposed plan for the improvement of our town centre. As you know, there was extensive community consultation before the designers were engaged. I'm sure you'll agree that a great many of your concerns have been acknowledged and incorporated into the draft plan that you see before you. Firstly, you'll notice that the existing supermarket has been enlarged. It's the biggest building you see on the plan, on the south side of the Main Street Mall. You can see that the part of Main Street in the town center has been turned into a pedestrian mall. We're planning extensive plantings of shrubs and small trees to provide shade. There will be plenty of parking for supermarket shoppers on the west side of the building and a few spaces to the south facing the park. The park will not be touched except for the addition of a small artificial lake which we hope will attract ducks and other bird life. We've taken into account your petition not to expand the tavern I know some of you wanted it removed from the town center altogether, so it will be discreetly screened from public view by more trees. The existing car park at the rear of the tavern will remain. Opposite the tavern, on the other side of Main Street, there will be a covered market. The Saturday Farmer's Market is hugely popular, but stall holders have suffered from a lot of bad weather recently. We think everyone will be happy with this part of the redevelopment. These two rectangular buildings here, in the middle of the plan, are new. We plan to demolish the existing shops, some of which are unsound anyway, and put up these two modern buildings instead. The one across Bay Road from the market will house boutiques, delicatessens, and other specialty shops all under one roof. The other one to the west will contain offices so you'll have convenient access to all the professionals in town inside one building. The swimming pool will remain where it is, of course. The school is a major user of the pool, so to make it safer for students to cross Swan Road, a pedestrian crossing will be installed in front of the school gymnasium. You can see we've planned a gap in the trees here, on the Main Street Mall, so that students will be able to walk across the Main Street Mall straight to the pool. Another pedestrian crossing to the west of the pool will give students and other users safer access to the new library, here. Library users will be able to share the supermarket parking. We expect that Swan Road may become a busier thoroughfare once the Main Street has been converted to pedestrians only but we'll address that issue in the second stage of the development. In the meantime, the east end of Swan Road will be converted into a public car park, here, between the council building and the market. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10.
Are you looking to move into a flat soon? I hope so, yes. The thing is, we have a few flats at the moment that we'd like to get rented out by the end of the month. I see. They're all good flats, and at the price you want. There's one in Eastern Towers, one in Granby Mansions, and another in Busby Garden. All three are nice blocks of flats. Could you tell me where they are? I'm at the train station at the moment. Eastern Towers, if you're coming from the station, isn't very far. Cross over City Bridge, then go left, and where the road divides, you want the right-hand fork. You'll see Eastern Towers on the left side of the road. It's a lovely building with trees around it. That sounds nice. What about Granby Mansions? The best way to get there from the station is probably to go down River Road and then cross over Old Bridge. The road bends to the right round the park, and if you follow along, you'll find it there on the left side. That's a great location with lovely views of the park. Very nice. And you said there was one more? Busby Garden, yes. OK, from the station, cross over City Bridge, keep going through the first crossroads until you come to the second crossroads. Busby Garden will be facing you over to the right side. It's very convenient for the shops. Fine, thank you. Well, I'll see you on Saturday. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. It's so nice to see so many people here on our open day. I hope you'll be impressed by what you see and that you'll all decide to join up. We have tried to cover all aspects of sport and fitness here at the centre. Well, let's start, shall we? As we're standing here at reception looking down the long corridor, You'll notice the car park on your left, where most of you have parked, asks you to reverse into the parking spaces for safety reasons. Also, this morning a couple of keen potential members rode their bikes right in through the door instead of leaving their bikes outside there on your right where the secure bike stands are. Um, you may be wondering why there are so many mothers arriving with little children. As we proceed, you'll see that this first room on your right is a creche where you can leave your little ones for up to two hours and they'll be expertly supervised while you work out. After the creche, on the same side of the corridor, is the male locker room with showers, spa and sauna. Opposite that, on your left, there's a staircase leading to the mezzanine floor. You'll not only get a great view out over the playing fields, but you'll also find a coffee shop and snack bar selling a range of wholesome food and drinks, protein shakes, fruit smoothies, that kind of thing. We won't go up the stairs at this point. I'll give you some time later when you can explore at your leisure. Most of you in the group are women, so next let me point out the women's locker room, which has the same facilities as the men's, you know, things like showers, spa and sauna. It's separated from the men's locker room by an office which the staff mainly use for administrative purposes. 
As we move on, on the same side of the corridor as the stairs, you'll see the entrance to the main hall, where they hold yoga classes, aerobics and so on. On the wall here, there is a timetable of all group classes and it is updated regularly. Now, opposite the hall is the gymnasium itself. Go ahead, have a look. Impressive, isn't it? Very spacious, light and airy with all the most modern equipment. As we continue down the corridor, past the main hall, on the same side, there is a conference room. This is mainly used when the centre is hosting a big sports event of some kind. It gives the officials a quiet place to gather and have meetings and so on. You'll have seen the 400 metre athletics track on your way in beside the car park. We have some pretty big athletics conventions here. Well, after a strenuous workout, I bet there's nothing you'd like more than a swim in the aquatic complex. But first, these rooms on our right are all part of the sports medicine clinic where you have access to a doctor, physiotherapist, massage therapist, podiatrist, and even a sports psychologist if you need one. Of course, you'll need to make appointments, but if you have any questions, just pop in and see the clinic receptionist and she'll help you out. Okay, let's go through the turnstile ahead of us. And here we are, in the aquatic centre. Turn left, past the pool shop, where you can buy or hire goggles, swim caps and such like. And we're outside, poolside. Beautiful, isn't it? Especially on a day like today. Go on, dip your toes in the water. And if that's not warm enough for you, then I'll take you to the indoor pool, which is less than half the size, but heated to 32 degrees. Let's go back past the pool shop and through the double doors to the indoor pool. Well, that's all I have time to show you. Let's go back to the reception area and if you like, we can run through some details about opening hours, membership and so on. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. Now, the area occupied by Hollylands is rather large and we don't want people to get lost. So I'll just give you a few pointers to help you orientate yourselves. So, uh, whether you come by car or bicycle, you'll come in from the road. Cars then park to the left through the gates into the car park and bikes to the right through the gates opposite. Cyclists in particular might be feeling thirsty at this point and you can get a drink from the machine at the end of the bike park, halfway to the museum entrance. You can enjoy your drink in the picnic area, which is opposite the car park. For anyone who doesn't have a mobile phone, there are payphones at the far end of the picnic area. Over at the opposite end of the picnic area, across the path, are the toilets. Next to them, and just to the right of the entrance to the main museum, is the first aid room, which we hope you won't need, but it's there in case you do. If you have any queries, please go to the manager's office, which is behind the picnic area. And last but not least, you'll need to buy your tickets or show your group pass to the ticket office on the left of the museum entrance. OK, <laughs> I'll pause there. Um, are there any questions at this point? That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section 3. Section 3. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Now, let me just tell you a bit about what you can see in the sculpture park. If you look at your map, you'll see the visitor centre where we are now at the bottom, just by the entrance. Since we only have an hour, you might not be able to get right around the park, but you can choose to visit some of the highlights. You might like to take a look at the Joe Tremaine sculptures, which are displayed on this side of the upper lake, just behind the education center and near the bridge. They're really impressive, but please remember not to let your children climb on them. One of our most popular exhibitions is the Giorgio Catalucci bird sculptures. They're just across the bridge on the north side of the lower lake. I love the way they're scattered around in the long grass beside the lake, looking as if they're just about to take to their wings. You could also go to the garden gallery. It's on this side of the upper lake. From the visitor centre, you go to the education centre, then keep on along the path and you'll see it on your right. There's an exhibition of animal carvings there which is well worth a look. We also have the Long House. That's quite a walk. From here, you go to the bridge and then turn left on the other side. Soon you'll see a winding pathway going up towards the northern boundary of the park. Go up there and you'll find it at the top. They have some abstract metal sculptures that are well worth seeing if you have time. OK, well, now, if you're... Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Now, we've also put together a map which we sent out to all the residents in the area. And on the map we've marked the proposed changes. Firstly, we'll plant mature pine trees to provide shelter and shade just to the right of the supermarket in Days Road. In order to address the traffic problems, the pavements on the corner of Carberry and Thomas Street will be widened. This will help to reduce the speed of vehicles entering Thomas Street. We think it's very important to separate the local residential streets from the main road, so the roadway at the entrance to Thomas Street from Days Road will be painted red. This should mark it more clearly and act as a signal for traffic to slow down. One way of making sure that the pedestrians are safe is to increase signage at the intersections. A Keep Clear sign will be erected at the junction of Evelyn Street and Hill Street to enable traffic to exit at all times. Something we're planning to do to help control the flow of traffic in the area is to install traffic lights halfway down Hill Street where it crosses Day's Road. Now, we haven't only thought about the cars and traffic of course, there's also something for the children. We're going to get school children in the area to research a local story, the life of a local sports hero perhaps and an artist will incorporate that story into paintings on the wall of a building on the other side of Hill Street from the supermarket. And finally, we've agreed to build a new children's playground, which will be at the other end of Hill Street, close to the intersection with Carberry Street. Wonderful. Now, what's the next stage? Well, the final plan... Will...
That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now, if I can just show on this wall map here where they all are, uh, you might like to go and have a look round. If you come into the main university entrance, at the first junction, you'll find that Brown Hall is on the corner opposite the theatre. So, you're nice and near the station here, though I think it can get a bit noisy with traffic. The same applies to Blake Residence, which is directly facing the junction to the university entrance. These halls are often used by medical students and such like, as they're out all day, so don't notice the noise. Anyway, if you then walk along Campus Road towards the main circle, You'll see the library on the corner, and Queen's Building is just past that as you head north. You will find that it is quieter here, and you may get fewer visitors. By the way, the circle is quite a feature of the campus, as it's set into the hills and has a brand new sports center in the middle. It's worth going to look around it. Now, the Parkway Flats are on the opposite corner to the library, facing the circle, as you head towards the main buildings. The main buildings are only about a five-minute walk from here, and places in these halls go quickly, so my advice is to reserve your place as soon as possible. Then, Temple Rise is inside the circle, next to the sports center, but further from the main university buildings. Now, if you'd like to go off and physically look... Okay, thanks. How can I get from here to Hackney, then? Right, well, you can choose. Uh, we're here at the information office, OK? Uh, now, next to us, on the corner of the High Street and Sweet Street, is the bus stop, opposite the bank. Uh -huh. The bus goes all the way to Hackney, but it is a very indirect route, so it could take ages. Uh. If you want to take the train, walk down the High Street towards the city, go past the bank, and on your left is the station just mm -hmm. before you get to the post office. Mm. There's a mainline service to Hackney Wick, so if you need to get into the centre of Hackney, you may need to pick up a bus when you get there. Mm. Opposite the post office, on the corner of Hart Lane, is the tube entrance. You'll see the big signs. That's probably the best way to get there, though you may have to change. It's probably best if you go and get a travel card first. <sighs> To get to the ticket office, you go out of here onto the High Street. Then turn into South Street 
and the ticket office is on your right opposite the cinema. Mm. Of course, you may decide it's quicker to take a taxi, <laughs> but it's a long way, so I think it'll be very expensive. If you do want to get a cab, then the rank is outside here, just opposite the office. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Dear viewers, thank you for taking this listening test. Please let me know about your score in the comments section below. Keep on practicing. It's the only way to be successful. We are planning to upload more IELTS helpful videos. Please subscribe to our channel, IELTS Listening. Thank you.